Next up, in the countdown, the transporter erector, or TE, will begin to retract from Falcon 9. That's the Falcon large... Falcon 9 tanks are pressing for Stromback retract. That's the large truss structure you see standing next to the rocket. It's hinged at the base and connect, connected to the launch mount beneath the first stage. First, the clamps around the sec second stage will open. Then the TE will begin to pivot back, slowly swinging away from the rocket. It will reach full recline by T minus 3 minutes and 40 seconds. Strong back, recheck has started. There you saw those clamp arms open. You may also hear it called the strong back, same structure, just a different name. The TE rolls Falcon 9 out to the pad, raises it vertical, and stays connected through the final seconds. It provides fuel, power, telemetry, and command connections between ground systems and the rocket. You see the strong back reclining. Those clamps you saw at the top help stabilize the second stage during fueling. They also prevent movement during high winds. Once they open, the rocket is fully free at the top. Right now, both stages are nearly fully loaded with about a million pounds of propellant. That includes RP-1, a highly refined kerosene, and liquid oxygen chilled to over 300 degrees below zero. Propellant is loaded late in the countdown, and that's intentional. Stage one lock flow is complete. Before any of that propellant flows through the plumbing and the engines, the and engines are chilled down. That prevents thermal thermal shock and boil off when the ultra cold liquid starts moving. You may hear that referred to as engine chill. Loading wraps in two steps. The first stage finishes around T minus three minutes and the second stage finishes a minute later. You've probably noticed some white clouds venting from the rocket and that's condensation. As the liquid oxygen warms slightly inside the tank, some of it boils off. That gas is vented to manage pressure. When the vented oxygen hits the warm, humid Florida air, it instantly condenses into clouds. At T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 enters startup. At that point, the rocket onboard flight computers take over. From here on, the countdown is fully autonomous. Stage two, lock load is complete. And there you heard, lock load is complete. Just inside of T minus two minutes, the nine Merlin 1D engines ignite. And once they're at full power, the Falcon 9 will lift off of the pad and begin its climb to orbit. As for now, the payload remains healthy. The rocket is tracking no issues. Weather is still a go for our scheduled liftoff at 8.35 a.m. Eastern Time. And with that, Falcon is fully fueled in startup and heading into, gas closeouts. heading into final moments before launch. Falcon 9 is in startup. Falcon 9 is in startup. Stage 1 and Stage 2 begin pressurizing for launch. The launch director is go for launch. And there you heard the launch director call that we are go for launch. All systems are go for launch for Falcon 9. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 15 seconds. T minus 10. 9, 8, 7, 6, 
five, four, three, two, one, zero. Catch the power and lift off. Go Piper, go Falcon. At T plus 30 seconds and counting, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. In just a few seconds, we'll throttle the engines down in preparation for max Q, a period Power of maximum nominal. A period of maximum aerodynamic pressure. This is a critical moment during flight because the combined stresses caused by Falcon 9 accelerating through the atmosphere and the ambient static pressure Falcon are at their 9 greatest. Is supersonic. To help go from vertical to horizontal, the first stage performs a pitch kick just after liftoff. About 10 seconds into flight, which is a maneuver known as a gravity Max Q. Turn. There you heard Max Q. The engines gimbal a small amount and that slowly turns the first stage from going straight up to going horizontal with the help of gravity and eventually we will be roughly horizontal to Earth as we achieve orbit. Impact chill has started. The rocket typically needs to go 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth and get into orbit. You can keep an eye on the first stage telemetry at the bottom of your screen. Now we have several events coming up in quick su succession, and we should hear all of them called out by mission control, starting with main engine cutoff, or MECO, then second stage separation, and SES-1, and fairing separation. MECO is where we shut off no, all no trajectory. nine M1D engines on the first stage. Stage separation is where the first and second stages of Falcon 9 separate from one another, and second engine start one, or SES-1, is when we light the MBAC engine on the second stage for the first time. Main engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. And there you heard and maybe even saw those events happen back to back, which again were Miko, stage separation, and SES-1. Next up will be fairing separation. Here's a cool shot. You can see the separation of the stages. Fairing separation confirmed. And there you heard, the fairings have separated. As we mentioned earlier, we will be attempting to retrieve these fairing halves again once they fall back to Earth. They will be taken back to shore by our ocean recovery vessel, Doug. It's about almost four minutes into our mission today. At about T plus six minutes, you should see on your screen the first stage entry burn. To start entry burn, we will relight three M1D engines, starting with the center engine known as E9, followed shortly after by E1 and E5 engines, which is similar to pumping the brakes to slow down the vehicle as it passes back into Earth's atmosphere. We will need to slow down to reduce re-entry forces, which, which then helps us recover and reuse the first stage. As you can see on your screen, the second stage is still picking up speed and heading to its destined orbit. orbit. We are still over a minute away from the 
beginning of the entry burn and you can check out the telemetry at the bottom of your screen and see that the second stage is picking up speed. We are about 40 seconds away from the beginning of the entry burn. If you like, you can check out the telemetry at the bottom of your screen where you can watch the graphics light up as the engines do. Both vehicles are on a nominal trajectory. In about 10 seconds, we'll hear that entry burn. Stage one, FTS is safe. Stage one, entry burn startup. And there's the call out for the entry burn startup on Falcon 9's first stage. This burn is set to last about 25 seconds and again is slowing down the vehicle in preparation for its final burn and landing. Stage one, entry burn shutdown. And there's a call out for entry burn Both shutdown. Both vehicles remain on a nominal trajectory the completion of Falcon 9's first stage entry burn. Coming up next will be the first stage landing burn, which will start a little over a minute from now. Stage two, FTS has saved. In about 15 seconds, we'll have the start of the landing burn of the first stage. The landing burn is the final burn of Falcon 9 booster used to reduce the remaining speed of the vehicle for a gentle and precise landing on our drone ship, a shortfall of gravitas. Stage 1, entry transonic. A very cool view of the first stage entering back into Earth's atmosphere. Stage one, landing burn. Stage two is in terminal guidance. Stage one, landing like deploy. Stage one, landing confirmed. And there you saw and heard the call out for a successful landing of our Falcon 9 rocket. This was the very first launch and landing of the first stage. Coming up now is Zico down. 1. Nominal orbit insertion. Great call out for the second stage while we watch the first stage land. As we mentioned at the very top of the show, at our customer's request, we will be ending our live coverage after the booster lands. So with that successful landing, we will wrap up our broadcast. All of us here at SpaceX want to thank our customer, Amazon. We also want to thank the Eastern Range and Federal Aviation Administration for supporting the mission. If you're interested in more launch coverage, head over to SpaceX.com slash launches for the most up-to-date launch up-to-date information. When you're there, check out our new departure board featuring our upcoming launches with details such as mission time, launch and landing site, and liftoff time. And remember to follow at SpaceX on X. Thank you for tuning in.